in the previous lecture we saw how the law of the wall for velocity that is for u plus can be used to evaluate uh, friction coefficient C f x for both external boundary layers as well as for pipe flows uh, irrespective of the pressure gradient and, uh, and also the effect of uh, surface velocity B w or the surface roughness. Uh, in all those cases, we were able to obtain coefficient of friction as a function of the Reynolds number, the local value of Reynolds number. Today, we are going to look at how the temperature law of the wall can be used to uh, uh, predict the Stanton number in external boundary layers and Nusset number in uh, uh, internal flows. Again, most of these methods are essentially analogy methods that is uh, a similarity between heat transfer and momentum transfer is one way or the other assumed and uh, we would be able to predict the variations of Stanton number and Nusselt number as functions of Reynolds number as well as Prandtl number. So, I would first deal with uh, external boundary layers uh, in four different ways. One is use of the law of the wall for uh, situations in which uh, there is no suction or blowing. I would also use uh, analogy methods. Then I will show you how to apply integral method that is the solution of the integral energy equation to take care of uh, effects of pressure gradients, wall temperature variations and then finally, we will extend the method to take care of the effects of roughness and, and suction and blowing. Likewise, we will look at uh, prediction of Nusselt number in pipe flows, internal flows and again use uh, make use of the law of the wall as well as the analogy methods. So, let us start with the external boundary layer case uh, and from lecture 28 you will recall that the temperature law of the wall is written as uh, T plus equal to Prandtl U plus plus P F which is a function of U plus, but if we write that equation in the infinity state we would get uh, T infinity plus equal to Prandtl T into U infinity plus plus P F infinity which as you recall is a function of Prandtl number only. So, U infinity plus here would be simply U infinity by U tau which is U infinity under root tau wall by rho or it can be written as under root U inf rho U infinity square divided by tau wall which is nothing but under root 2 by C F X. T infinity plus as you will recall is defined as minus T infinity minus T wall divided by Q wall by rho C P U tau. So, if I divide and multiply this by in U infinity and note that Q wall divided by T wall minus T infinity is H x the heat transfer coefficient, then you can see that this part is the Stanton number 1 over Stanton number and U tau or U infinity is nothing but under root C f x by 2 and as a result this equation simply transforms to Stanton x equal to C f x by 2 square root into Prandtl t into under root 2 by C f x plus P f infinity and as you will recall I said the, the turbulent Prandtl number is approximately 0 0.9 some people take it 0 0.8 5, but uh, that is still one can make Prandtl t also a function of Prandtl number itself as I indicated what the possible correlation could be. For Prandtl number 1 you recall P f infinity is 0. So, that is 0 for Prandtl number equal to 1 and uh, Reynolds actually used Prandtl t equal to 1 and hence then uh, you will see the Stanton x would simply be C f x by 2 which implies perfect analogy between uh, uh, heat transfer and momentum transfer. From experiments for near unity Prandtl numbers, uh, Stanton x correlates as C f x by 2 into Prandtl raise to 0.4 minus 0 0.4 and hence uh, for zero pressure gradient boundary layer Stanton x is equal to 0 0.0286 Reynolds x to the power of minus 0 0.2 Prandtl to the power of minus 0 0.1. This was the correlation you use routinely in your uh, undergraduate work. And, uh, we have shown that it can be derived from 
this equation, the temperature law of the wall. Of course, if you had a rough surface, then uh, uh, one must evaluate C f x for a rough surface and P f infinity also to be must be used for a rough surface, so as to get Stanton number for a rough surface. Now, in all this evaluation, you can see that C f x must be evaluated from the methods of the previous lecture. So, whatever the pressure gradient or V w or whatever is present, you simply use that to evaluate uh, C f x and straight away use uh, evaluate Stanton x from that. This is the simplest way to evaluate Stanton number, but then we can also apply somewhat more rigorously uh, analogy method in which we call that the effective Prandtl number is essentially d t plus by d u plus which we can write as d t plus by d y plus multiplied by d u plus by d y plus. Then uh, sorry this should be raised to d y plus by d u plus it should be not d u plus by d y plus d y plus by d u plus and hence uh, using the relation tau tot divided by tau wall is approximately equal to 1 equal to 1 plus nu t by nu d u plus by d y plus you will recall we had derived this equation gives uh, d t plus by d y plus equal to 1 plus nu t by nu d u plus by d y plus parental raised to minus 1 plus nu t by nu into parental t or simply uh, 1 over parental number into 1 over d u plus by d y plus minus 1 1 over parental t raised to minus 1. Integrating from y equal to 0 to infinity and using the three layer law for u plus and hence for d u plus by d y plus it follows that. Now, if I put d u plus by d y plus uh, for the laminar sub layer is equal to 1 then of course, that quantity vanishes and I simply get t edge of the sub layer plus minus 0 uh, equal to parental y s l plus equal to parental u s l plus and as you know u s l plus and y s l plus are 5. So, therefore, uh, you get t s l plus is equal to 5 parental. Extend the integration further from uh, sub layer to uh, transitional layer. So, t transitional layer plus minus T S L plus and here D u plus by D y plus would become 1 over kappa y plus where kappa is 0.2 and therefore, that will become 5. So, 5 parental T L n 1 plus 5 parental by parental T and here I will use transitional layer as uh, y plus for transitional layer as 30 then you get that relationship and then from the edge of the transitional layer till the edge of the of the boundary layer you will get t infinity plus minus t transitional layer plus uh, again d u plus by d y plus will be 1 over kappa y plus and therefore, uh, where kappa is 0 0.4 then you will get that relationship that involving delta plus the boundary layer thickness. So, we got essentially layer by layer contributions to t infinity plus and uh, if I add these three equations as I show on the next slide and rearrange if I add these things then you will see T S L plus here gets cancelled with that this gets cancelled with that and I would get a relationship for T infinity plus which as you will recall from the previous slide T infinity plus is nothing but C f x by 2 by Stanton. Then uh, I get C f x by 2 divided by Stanton x equal to 5 Prandtl plus all this this is the transitional layer contribution this is the laminar sub layer contribution and this is the fully turbulent layer contribution. Now, how do we evaluate delta plus here? Well, as you recall uh, in the outer layers delta power law very well applies. Uh, so, instead of logarithmic law if we apply power law then simply delta plus is equal to u infinity plus divided by 8.75 raised to 7 or that is equal to this quantity. The C f x is evaluated by integral methods of uh, equation uh, of lecture 29. So, you substitute delta plus here uh, as uh, C f x and C f x that appears here and here are both uh, first evaluated from lecture 29 for a given situation and that gives you the variation of Stanton number as a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now, when u infinity and T w minus T infinity vary arbitrarily with x, then one must invoke the 
the integral energy equation which reads as 1 over u infinity into T w minus T infinity d by d x delta 2 u infinity T w minus T infinity uh, equal to Stanton x. So, you recall this integral energy equation when V w is 0. Now, for further analysis let Stanton x be equal to C Reynolds x to the power of minus n. Now, this kind of this method is often called the Ambrock's methods. Ambrock was a Soviet scientist uh, and he published a paper on this. Uh, uh, so, for the moment uh, we will simply assume that the Stanton x will vary as C times Reynolds x to the power of minus m and that is substituted here. Then for u constant u infinity and T w minus T infinity boundary layer that is let us say fat plate it will simply mean d delta 2 by d x equal to Stanton x equal to c u infinity x by nu raised to minus n. And if we integrate that, I will get delta 2 equal to c over 1 minus n u infinity by nu raised to minus n x raised to 1 minus n. And if I use the idea that uh, delta 2 is 0 at x equal to 0 that is right at the leading edge, then Stanton x would simply become that. Stanton x would simply be function of delta 2 raised to n over n minus 1. Now, this is a very important relationship because we will be subsequently using this relationship for a variety of situations. So, we assume the validity of the last relationship regardless of the previous history of the boundary layer. Then the integral energy equation becomes d delta 2 u infinity T w minus T infinity of d by dx and then that is equal to u infinity T w minus T infinity c 1 minus n by c u infinity delta 2 by nu n over n minus 1. And if we were to integrate this equation you will get c nu raised to n 1 minus n uh, u infinity T w minus T infinity 0 to x u infinity T w minus T infinity 1 over that. So, in effect then I can calculate delta 2 for any arbitrary variation of u infinity and T w minus T infinity with respect to x. If I use now the previous uh, Stanton x delta 2 relationship of this type, then uh, you can see I can get Stanton x equal to C nu n uh, T w minus T infinity uh, raised to n over n minus 1 divided by this integral. And uh, this essentially allows you to calculate Stanton x for any arbitrary variation of uh, free stream velocity and wall temperature. Now, assuming the flat plate data for C equal to 0 0.0284 Prandtl raised to minus 0.4 and n equal to 2. You will recall I showed this uh, to be the case in the first uh, slide here that Stanton x can actually be written as, uh, as 0 0.0286 Reynolds x to the power of essentially if I say C is equal to 0 0.0286 Prandtl raised to minus 0.4 and n equal to 0.2, then that is what I have done here. I would get a relationship for Stanton x equal to this quantity and you will recall that u w is u infinity is actually the pressure gradient. Although these constants are strictly valid only for flat plate, but this Stanton number expression has used the same value of C and n and you get this relationship for Stanton x. Now, Crawford and Case have uh, actually experimented with the constant wall temperature boundary layers in which the free stream varies arbitrarily. That means, only free stream varies arbitrarily not T w minus T infinity and their experimental data fit this correlation very well. This is the pressure gradient parameter nu infinity square du infinity by dx is the pressure gradient parameter less than 10 raise to plus 6 and the Stanton number evaluated from this relation this integration and that evaluated from this agrees extremely well uh, and therefore, we can say that use of C and N in this manner is appears to be quite valid even for situations in which u infinity uh, is not constant or T w is not constant. So, um, with this experience we now move forward and look at uh, situations in which there is suction and blowing. So, now again for a flat plate and T w minus T infinity constant Crawford and Craig show that for finite V w Stanton x 
when V w is finite is equal to uh, divided by Stanton x when V w equal to 0 can be written as uh, ln 1 plus B h by B h and uh, B h is nothing but our blowing parameter, but this time based on Stanton x. We shall derive this relationship later on when we consider mass transfer problem in which the suction and blowing would be viewed as a problem of mass transfer and uh, the B h then is defined in this fashion and Stanton x V w then and substituting for Stanton V a V w equal to 0, which is 0 0.0284 parental point power minus 4 Reynolds x to the power become into L n 1 plus B h by B h that is what become and the energy equation with uh, for a flat plate where u infinity is constant and T w minus T infinity equal constant will energy equation would simply be d delta 2 by d x Stanton x V w plus V w by u infinity, but if I substitute this for Stanton x V w uh, sorry uh, if I substitute for V w by u infinity is equal to B h into Stanton x V w then you will see it simply becomes that 1 plus B h or the total expression then can be written in this fashion Reynolds x to the power of minus 1. So, there is ln 1 plus B h multiplied by 1 plus B h divided by B h Reynolds x to the power of minus point minus point 0.2. If B h was constant, then the entire term here on the inside the bracket would be constant and it is not very difficult to integrate this equation using delta 2 equal to 0 x equal to 0 uh, gives the integration gives R e x to the power of minus point 0.2 equal to this relationship multiplied by R e delta 2 raised to minus point 0.25 or using again the Stanton x Reynolds R e x relationship of the previous slide here. The solution can be written as uh, Stanton x for a finite V w is written as 0 0.0125 parental raised to minus 0 0.5 Reynolds delta 2 raised to minus 0 0.25 1 plus B h raised to 0 0.25 and then this factor raised to 1.25. Of course, this integration and uh, was made possible by assuming B h equal to constant. Now, like in the previous case, we shall assume the validity of this relationship between Stanton x and delta 2 even when B h u infinity and T w minus T infinity vary arbitrarily with x. So, that is what I have done next slide. So, for this case then the integral energy equation will, will read like this into all this quantity into that and then if we were to integrate as in the previous case you get a Stanton x will be equal to 0 0.0284 parental rest to minus 0 0.4 then B h now varies with x. So, that is included and you can see I can perform this integration for any arbitrary variation of u infinity T w minus T infinity and B h. So, that uh, I can get variation of Stanton x. Crawford and Case have sh show remarkably good fit to experimental data uh, and predictions using mixing length. So, they had a situation in which a uh, highly accelerated boundary layer was considered with V w uh, present uh, and it was changing arbitrarily. Uh, and therefore, the problem was solved by a mixing length model and uh, predictions were obtained. Uh, experimental data were available for the same case and then this expression, this approximate expression derived from Ambrox procedure was used and a uh, very, very good agreement was shown between uh, experimental data and the correlation as well as predictions using mixing length. With this, I end the uh, the methods in which uh, law of the wall is used or uh, integral energy equation is used. And now, I turn to the more the differential equation based methods which are and it so happens that you can use similarity type methods for turbulent boundary layers as well. And the governing equation for the temperature boundary layer would read as u d t by d x v d t d y plus nu times sorry equal to plus nu uh, d by d y b parental d t by d y, where b parental is alpha by nu and alpha t by nu uh, which is parental raised to minus 1 plus parental t raised to minus 1 into nu t plus and nu t plus as you will remember is nothing but nu t by nu 
and nu t would be given by Prandtl's mixing length as a function of y the distance from the wall. In lecture 29 I introduced the similarity variables to be used for turbulent barrel layers and if we use the same similarity variables then the, the equation for turbulent heat transfer boundary layer would be uh, uh, given by this d by d eta into b Prandtl into theta prime plus f theta prime plus 2 n over m plus 1 f dash 1 minus theta equal to again a function of x on the right hand side. This was also found in case of momentum equation that you do get things on the right hand side which are functions of x where the things on the left hand side are essentially functions of eta. So, here m is the pressure gradient parameter defined as x over u infinity d u infinity by d x n is the parameter related to wall temperature variation. So, n would be 0 of course, if T w was constant and theta is defined as T w minus T over T w minus T infinity. And again like in the velocity boundary layer case, you need to of course, f f dash are available already from the velocity boundary layer solutions and therefore, solutions for theta would be obtained uh, by iterative method just in the manner in which the similarity solution for velocity was solved. The boundary conditions are of course, theta equal to 0 at uh, eta equal to 0 and theta equal to infinity would be equal to 1. That completes discussion of the external boundary layers and the similarity method you need to do is at every x you solve the left hand side by shooting method. The right hand side is evaluated from values of available at the one step before it, uh, so that the right hand side can be formulated as a constant for that step and uh, one simply solves the left hand side again by shooting method. Uh, using the intermediate solution for theta, the right hand side is evaluated again and till convergence is obtained and we accept the solution at that position x and move to the next step. I now move to internal flows. So, we wish to use the wall law for pipe flow. So, if I write the T plus equal to u Prandtl T into u plus plus P f infinity corresponding to central line, then T C L plus will be that and u C L plus you will recall is nothing but u bar plus plus 1.5 by kappa plus P f infinity. So, where T C L plus now is would get defined in this manner T w minus actually it will get defined as T w minus T C L divided by Q w, but uh, if I multiply and divide by T w minus T bulk then you will see uh, this gets T w minus T bulk over Q wall. T w minus T C L over T w minus T bulk multiplied by rho C p and u tau that would be the definition of T C L plus. Now, I multiply by k and divide by k, I multiply by u bar and divide by u bar, then you will see this can be written as this is nothing but 1 over h the heat transfer coefficient into k divided by diameter which I have divided by and now I will again multiplied by. So, I get u bar d by alpha multiplied by u tau over u bar multiplied by T wall minus T C L divided by T wall minus T bulk. Now, k over h d is nothing but 1 over Nusselt number, u bar d by alpha is nothing but Peclet number or product of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So, these two factors are nothing but Reynolds Prandtl divided by Nusselt number. u tau over u bar would be simply under root f by 2 the friction factor for a pipe flow multiplied by T wall minus T C L divided by T wall minus T bulk and hence equating T C L plus from this expression and from this expression that is the law of the wall. Then uh, you will see I can write Nusselt number equal to Reynolds Prandtl under root f by 2 divided by Prandtl t into under root 2 by f plus 1.5 kappa plus p f infinity and this becomes T w minus T C L over T w minus T bulk. To use this relationship, we would of course, need estimate of 
T w minus T center line divided by T w minus T bulk, which we expect to be somewhat greater than 1 in a, a turbulent pipe flow, because remember the temperature profiles are very flat inside the core of the flow and there are sharp gradients of temperature near the wall and therefore, the ratio of T w minus T C L divided by T w minus T bulk would be only slightly greater than 1. So, uh, that is what we shall show. Now, many times quite analogous to what is power law for velocity, you assume a validity of the power law even for temperature T minus T w divided by T center line minus T w uh, equal to y by r raised to 1 by 7 and which we said would be equal to u over u c l. Then uh, using definition of T bulk as you know which is simply integral 0 to r u t d r d r divided by integral u r d r. It is easy to show that uh, T w minus T center line divided by T w minus T bulk would be about 6 by 5 which is close to 1 let us say or 1.2, 1 to 1.2. Remember this relationship is not absolutely exact, but we can take it to be between 1 and 1. It, it is a function of Reynolds number. You will notice that for high Reynolds number, you need to take this as 1 over 9, whereas below 50,000, it can be taken as 1 over 7. So, uh, as a result, T w minus T c l over T w minus T bulk is actually a function of Reynolds number. This, this factor turns out to be function of Reynolds number. The higher the Reynolds number, closer it gets to the value of 1. And likewise, u c l by u bar uh, is 1.22, but that is too high an estimate, but nonetheless can be taken to be approximately so, close to 1. Then uh, you can substitute these values for u c l by u bar and uh, I mean mainly you want this value but that the evaluation of that value requires this value. So, that is why I have quoted it. The most widely used correlation for pipe flow which is considered to be very accurate uh, with experimental data is the one by Gnien Lenske uh, and it reads like this n u equal to Reynolds minus 1000 Prandtl under root f by 2 into 2 by f plus 12.7 Prandtl raised to 2 by 3 minus 1 and it is valid for gases to heavy oils 0.5 to 2000 and 2300 to a 5 million Reynolds number. So, notice the, the similarity between the equation we have derived here. So, instead of uh, Reynolds, the Ginelinsky correlation has Reynolds minus 1000. Prandtl number is still there under root f by 2 is very much there. Prandtl t is perhaps taken as 1 and then there is a factor of 2 by f and then there is remember this is 3.66 in our calculation and then the p f infinity which we use from our correlation. But uh, Ginelinsky Lenski takes Prandtl t equal to 1. He is also taking the ratio if you like of this to be nearly 1 and then uh, this is the function of the Prandtl number. So, this most widely accepted correlation has a form which is very similar to what we uh, derived from the temperature law. We can also apply analogy method for pipe flow. So, for fully developed pipe flow for example, d p d x is equal to constant. Hence, the actual momentum equation uh, and its consequences are that 1 over r d r tau taught by d r would be equal to minus d p by d x and integration would give tau taught by tau wall equal to r by r which meaning the total stress divided by the wall stress is a linear function of r by r and this we had shown from the experimental data in an earlier slide and replacing r equal to r minus y the capital radius minus y as a distance from the wall it will be 1 minus y over r. So, tau tot is equal to rho times nu nu t du dr and that would become minus rho nu plus nu t du by dy and therefore, 1 plus nu t by nu can be shown to be 1 minus y plus by r plus divided by du plus by dy plus. So, that is what I shall use to substitute in our from slide 2 here, I would use that to substitute for du plus by dy plus uh, and nu t by nu 
sorry I would use that to do this so 1 over nu t by nu. Then you will see that d t plus by d y plus now is 1 minus y plus by r plus over 1 over parental number 1 minus y plus by r plus over d u plus by d y plus minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over parental t raised to minus 1. And now we will evaluate d u plus by d y plus for each of the three layers that is sub layer, the transitional layer and the fully turbulent layer and this is what the integration gives you for three layer law. T s l plus minus 0 equal to that as before, this is also everything is as before for an external boundary layer and the T c l plus minus T transitional layer would give you 2.5 parental T l n r plus by 30 again for parental greater than or equal to 1, but also gases can be included which is very close to 1. So, if I add these 3, I would get T s l plus uh, before adding of course, T c l plus by definition is Reynolds parental over n u over this, this we showed on the previous slide. If I equate this equal to the summation of the 3, I would get the expression for the Nusselt number, where r plus is now expressed as r e by 2 under root f by 2 uh, and therefore, Nusselt number would become r e parental f by 2 t wall minus t c l uh, t wall minus t bulk divided by the entire quantity here and uh, this will be the second expression we have got now for representing Nusselt number. Now, of course, you have been using quite routinely the dittus bolter correlation for very simple as n u equal to 0 0.023 r e raised to 0 0.8 uh, and parental raised to n where n is equal to 0.4 for heating case and n equal to 3 for cooling case. In chemical engineering literature most often the correlation due to Slisher and Rouse is used and it says Nusselt number is equal to 5 plus 0 0.015 Reynolds raised to a and parental raised to b and this is valid for 0 0.1 to uh, I mean 10,000. Uh, and Reynolds number from 10,000 to a million and A is made a function of parental number and B is made again a function of parental number. So, these are some of the uh, experimental correlations which are routinely used. Now, as I said the, all this uh, in our analysis is actually for parental number greater than 1, but for liquid metals Nusselt number is correlated in this fashion A plus B R e raised to 0.85 parental raise to 0.93 and where A and B take these values. Now, remember I said in, in my lectures when I introduced turbulent flow that uh, Nusselt numbers do not respond to the boundary conditions like in laminar flow, Tur Nusselt numbers in turbulent flow are relatively insensitive to whether it is a constant wall heat flux boundary condition or constant wall temperature. But that argument applies only to gases and uh, situations in which uh, parental number is uh, greater than 1. When you come to liquid metals, they develop character. The thermal boundary layer thickness now enters uh, the transitional layer and also inner part of the turbulent layer many times depends on the value of parental number. And uh, in such situations, the boundary condition begins to influence events even in turbulent flow and that is what is shown here that the constants a and b should be modified as shown here for q wall equal to constant and t wall equal to constant. So, what it shows is again the heat uh, Nusselt number for constant wall heat flux will be greater than the Nusselt number for constant wall temperature a circumstance very similar to that found in laminar flows. By taking temperature ratio as 1.1 and parental T equal to 0.943887 and you recall the, I had given you the relationship that parental T actually can be modeled as parental T equal to 0 0.85 plus 0 0.0309 into uh, parental divided by parental plus 1 sorry this, is, this should be parental 1 divided by parental. Then uh, you will see that this relationship assumes for parental greater than or equal to 1 will give you uh, for example, at parental equal to 1 this will simply make it about 0 0.06 and parental t will be about 0 0.91 for uh, uh, 
uh, parental equal to 1. And for uh, very large parental numbers, also it will be around uh, 0 0.88 because uh, this ratio would be 1. But now imagine for liquid metals where parental number is let us say of the order of 0 0.001, then you will see this, this quantity becomes 1.01 divided by 0 0.001 or nearly 1000 uh, and therefore, this will become almost equal to uh, 31.0. So, parental T can be very large for a very small parental number that is liquid metal. But I am presently considering cases in which only say from gases to organic liquids. So, parental 0 0.5 to 5 and 25 and I have calculated parental T using the relationship that I just showed. Uh, so, it is 0 0.943 here for 0 0.5 parental T equal to 0 0.87 for parental equal to 5 and 0 0.82 for parental equal to 25. And the temperature ratio I have always taken as 1.1 in each of those cases, then just see what happens. So, at Reynolds number 3000, Ginelensky correlation predicts 8.13, whereas Ditters Volter predicts 10.5, Schicher Rao's Leacher and Rao's produce 11.9, whereas the analogy method produces 10.3. And uh, uh, similarly, at 10,000 and 50,000 and uh, 1 lakh and 1 million. Then you will see that Ginelensky and uh, other correlation predict very well uh, are comparable in the set number, but Ditters Volter is way out as you can see for uh, uh, high Reynolds numbers. Ditters Volter relationship predicts much higher than predicted by any of the other correlations for gases. What about water? something very similar you will see that uh, that at sufficiently high Reynolds number say 10th uh, this correlations are close to each other, but again at higher Reynolds number Ditters Bolter under predicts the Nusset number compared to other correlations, whereas for gases it was over predicting for water it is under predicting and that trend continues even for organic liquids. So, for parental greater than 1. Uh, apparently, Ditters Bolter under predicts, whereas for Prandtl less than 1, it over predicts compared to the correlations that are well accepted. Ginelensky in particular is very well accepted correlation. So, from these relative comparisons, we say that the correlations for pipe flow can be applied to, of course, a non circular ducts by evaluating F, Reynolds, and Nusset number based on hydraulic diameter. This you have routinely you done in your undergraduate work. Of course, the theory to support this, uh, this assumption requires solution of, of, uh, of Reynolds stress equations. So, that uh, the secondary flows predicted in the cross section by the Reynolds stress model can actually explain why hydraulic diameter concept works for non circular ducts. The easy to use Ditters Bolter correlation, although it is very easy to use, actually over predicts Nusset number for Prandtl greater than 1 and under predicts for Prandtl greater than 1. For a complete description of flow and heat transfer involving complex ducts, strong and changing strain rates due to body forces uh, and it is best to use CFD techniques with two equation or stress equation models. This completes our discussion on turbulent flow and heat transfer and henceforth now I will begin uh, with convective mass transfer.